So this is a collaboration with my friend Baba Tunde in Nigeria who asked me, have you ever had okra soup? And I haven't. And in fact, I don't think I've ever seen okra soup. So as you know, our collaborations now, we're going to try and put a local twist on the thing. But also I thought it'd be kind of fun if he gave me just very, very basic instructions and ingredients and I try and muddle my way through it, a bit kind of like Bake Off style. So this is all I've got. I've got a list of ingredients, not all of which I was able to get, and some of which I've decided to swap. And that's my instructions there. So I've just got to muddle my way through this. I'm going to end up with something, obviously, that's not very authentic. But if you want to go and see the authentic version, then click on this link in the card here, or the link in the video description for Babatunde's rendering of this in a more traditional Nigerian style. I'm going to go for some authentic ingredients and I'm going to localise it with some sort of British and North European ingredients. So my recipe calls for stockfish and dry fish and I wasn't able to get any other dry fish that wasn't just stockfish. So I've got ground stockfish and I'm going to use sardines but sardines will go in last thing because they're already cooked. The recipe says soak and wash the stockfish but this is ground stockfish. I think if I was to drain this I'd just lose half of it. So I think the plan here is I just rehydrate this in some boiling water. Obviously not going to use all of it because it's quite intensely fishy. So I'm going to go in with about, well doesn't, the recipe doesn't say, so I'm going to use about, that's about a tablespoon and a half of stockfish there. I'm going to try to make half of the recipe here. Boiling water. We'll just let that rehydrate in there. And I've also got dried crayfish here. This is a classic Nigerian ingredient, just dried little shrimps, really. And again, really seafoody flavour. So I'm going to put, well, a small handful of those in. Recipe doesn't specify how much, so I've got, what, two and a half tablespoons there. And we'll rehydrate those as well. So far, that's kind of authentic, isn't it? The recipe calls for meat, which I imagine will be chicken or turkey, probably, in Babatunde's case. I thought I'd use bacon. I thought I'd use a bit of smoky bacon. So I've got three nice thick rashers of smoky bacon here. I'm going to fry that off first rather than boil it. Now that bacon's just fried a little bit, it's much firmer and it will be much easier to cut up into small pieces. So I'm just going to take that out to my chopping board, chop it into little lardons. And then that can go back in and fry until it's crisp together with one medium onion. I'm just going to keep that going, moving. I want the bacon to crisp up. I actually want the onion to take a little bit of colour as well. So, recipe calls for four scotch bonnets. I'm making a half portion and also these are very big scotch bonnets compared to what I normally get. So I think I'm just going to use one scotch bonnet in here. I might regret that, it might not be hot enough, but we'll, I can always add a splash of hot sauce at the table if there's extra heat required. So I haven't got a stone grinder to grind this up into a pulp. So I'm gonna put it in this pot. I'm gonna have a bit of water in there and I will blend that with the stick blender. This is where my eyes may suffer a bit, but I'm gonna try not to splash it up too much. Okay, it has caught me in the throat just a little bit, but that was a much more successful way, <coughs> excuse me, to blend scotch bonnets than dry in the food processor. Yeah, I think that's going to have enough heat for me because actually even just put my face in there now, it's making me cough. So I think one large scotch bonnet is going to be my limit. I've got a very authentic Nigerian ingredient here, which is iru, which is fermented locust beans. To me, this smells like blue cheese and it has a texture of kind of like dense mushrooms. So if you had to substitute, maybe some shiitake mushrooms and a bit of blue cheese would be the closest you'd get to that. That's gonna go in a bit later. These stock cubes are actually really salty, so I may only use half of one of these stock cubes because I don't wanna overdo the salt. We've got some salted fish here. We've got salt in the bacon. We're gonna have some salt from the sardines. So I don't wanna overdo the salt in the recipe because you can't subtract it. And then the star ingredient, the okra. Now, this is £5.39 worth of okra. Okra is quite an expensive ingredient here in the UK because it doesn't grow here. Or at least it isn't grown here very or at least it isn't grown here very commonly. So yeah, this is a lot this is a lot of money worth of okra. I think we're gonna find on Babatunde's recipe that uh, okra is one of the cheaper vegetables out there in Nigeria. But here it's expensive. So I'm gonna use about half of this probably. 
and looking at the recipe I've only got to cook the okra for eight minutes after it goes in so we're gonna wash that chop it into little pieces and then get ready to go. There's no big chunks of meat to cook here, so everything else is actually going to proceed quite quickly once we get going. This could be an interesting one because to my taste, okra is a bit slimy and you can see there we've got strands of mucilage picking up from the vegetable, but we'll go with it. It's a vegetable that's not commonly eaten in the UK, possibly because it has this texture or adds this texture to a dish, but I think it'll be okay in a soup. I saw Adam Ragusea recently make a soup that contained okra, and in that context, it's kind of like a thickener. So hopefully we'll get the same effect here. My bacon is cooked as much as I want it to be now. It's got crispy edges, and we've got a little bit of crisping happening on the onion. So, in with the stockfish and the crayfish, and a bit more water. In with the scotch bonnet pepper, also the iru. And the recipe talks about reserving some onion and adding it at this stage, which I will do. I've, I've got another half onion there. And I think initially the onion was for cooking with the meat to season the meat if you're using a big chunk of meat, which I'm not. Now at this stage, I'm also meant to add some red palm oil, which I'm not gonna do for two reasons. One is that I just don't actually like red palm oil. It's got a taste that unlike babatunde, I didn't grow up with. And so when I tasted that red palm oil in previous recipes, I just didn't like it. But also palm oil's got a bit of a bad reputation at the moment. It happens to be that the palm oil that you'll see Babatunde using in his recipes is locally produced. So it's not the palm oil that's the evil villain all across the internet. However, if I was to try to source red palm oil, there's no guarantee that it would be sustainable. So instead, I'm gonna use some rapeseed oil, which is British extra virgin rapeseed oil. This is a pressed oil from, well, what Americans will call canola but it's pressed and it's got a bit of character and flavor, a bit like a bit like an extra virgin olive oil. It's not just a bland oil. It's got a little bit of taste to it. Of course, it's not the authentic taste, but it's what I got. And just to give it the color that you would normally get from the red palm oil, a bit of sweet paprika. I'm just gonna make sure we cook that a bit because paprika does need a bit of cooking. At this point, I'm just gonna taste for seasoning because we could add salt here or a stock cube yeah, I think, wow, that's that scotch bonnet, that one big scotch bonnet was enough, I think. So I'm just going to have half a chicken stock cube in here. And now my okra, and we're on the clock now, so this needs eight minutes of cooking, just gently. I'll have a little bit more water. Now also the recipe says you can add spinach leaves. I don't have any spinach leaves and I didn't bother to buy any, but I am gonna put in some basil from the infinite basil conveyor. But again, that's gonna go in right at the last minute. Now you might be looking at this and thinking, how is that soup? Depending on where you are in the world, the word soup can mean a variety of different things. It appears to be the case that in Nigeria, a lot of things that they call soup there are actually quite thick in consistency and more like a kind of stew. But anyway, so I don't know what the consistency is here. Oh, look, this has gone kind of stringy because of the okra in it. It's gone kind of, yeah. Now, I haven't forgotten the sardines. I'm actually gonna put them on top as a kind of dressing, but they're sardines in tomato sauce. I'm gonna open the can and pour off any liquid into the soup. So again, that's kind of replaced some of that red oil that we would normally see in the authentic Nigerian version. Although that red is coming from tomatoes here. It wouldn't be a Nigerian recipe without background noise. So I apologize for the sounds you can hear in the background. I've got some fencing contractors in today repairing a fence in the garden. So if you can hear noise, music, drilling in the background, that's what that is. Okay, we're just a couple of minutes away from the end of cooking now and I'm gonna throw in a very generous handful of basil leaves. I'm gonna turn the heat right down now and really just let it cook in what's left of the heat from the pan. Right, time to serve this and give it a taste. And then I'm just gonna kind of garnish that with a couple of pieces of sardine. Let's get that to the table and give it a taste. Okay then, so kind of UK European style or really atomic shrimp style Nigerian okra soup. What's it going to be like? 
The recipe says to serve it with gari or fufu or one of those kind of things, which the recipe describes as a swallow, which is interesting. It's something starchy, which for me, of course, is going to be a buttered bread roll. Let's give it a taste. First, I think we'll just taste this broth. I was right about the I was right about the Scotch bonnet. That is hot for my taste anyway, but not overpowering. And actually, there's loads of flavour in there. Yep, I can taste bacon and fish is a good combination anyway. Okay, time for a bit of everything now. It's really nice. It's really, really, it's very, very fishy, which is unusual for a soup for me anyway. But actually, it's delicious. What's it like with that bit of basil? Mm. Very, very intense flavour. Just the right amount of pepper heat for me here, I would say. And, well, let's try it with a bit of bread and butter. Mmm. To go with a starchy thing like that, good. And not that we needed more fish, but with the sardines. Sardines might actually have been overkill, but it works. So there we go, that's my kind of British Eurocentric version of Nigerian okra soup. Let me know what you think about that in the comments, but go gentle with me, bear in mind, I've never even seen this before. I'm kind of adapting it on my own without having ever seen it, and only based on a quite sketchy description, which was how we chose to play this. I actually think this is really delicious, and I would pay money for that in a restaurant. But let me know in the comments what you think. I hope I didn't butcher it too badly. And I look forward to seeing Babatunde's authentic version on his channel, so don't forget to go and have a look at that. At the time of eating this, obviously I haven't seen that. So I hope that was interesting. Ingredients and recipe notes will be in the video description as usual. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.